بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته again we are still on verse number thirty of سورة البقرة وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة and this interesting story this is the story of human beings the start of the human beings journey on earth as told by the Creator Himself. Very interesting story, so let's continue from wherever we left last time. When they said, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ That we are glorifying you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising you, and we are uh, having a pure aqeedah about you, نُقَدِّسُ لَكَ why did they say that? Why did they use these things? There are two possibilities. One of them is that when they stated this question, which one might think that it came out of a knowledge, they immediately withdraw. In this part, they withdraw and say that we glorify your praise and we testify that you must have a wisdom in that. So it's like a student being asked a question. He's giving his opinion to the teacher which is, who is far more knowledgeable than the student. And after stating his opinion, the student in front of the teacher, he immediately backtracks at the end and saying that this is what I think, but you are more knowledgeable, O oh, oh sir, O oh teacher, O oh professor. You are more knowledgeable. You are, you are the professor. You are the, I am just your student. So we can understand this part from this, uh, from this style okay, of the angels that, that oh Allah, this is what it appears to us from the, from our limited knowledge of what we have seen from Adam's creation and his ability to talk and his uh, free will that he's going to do these things. But, but we submit to your knowledge, we glorify you and uh, we don't know, something like that. Okay? But let us dissect these two words, Nusabbih and Nuqaddis. Because when you go into the Arabic dictionary, you will find them somehow similar. But there is a subtle difference because Quran never repeats same thing twice. There is a purpose behind the selection of each and every word in the Quran. So as Nusabbih, uh, <coughs> the Tasbih, but before that, I, 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 I said that there could be two possibilities why they said this one. Um, and I just expressed the one possibility. The other possibility is that they might have been saying that we should have been given this title instead of Adam or this job description or this job instead of Adam. Because we are always uh, glorifying you. We are ready at your at your uh, disposal for doing anything. So send us as a Khalifa on earth because we have this, these qualities of the speech and taqdis and uh, glorifying you and these things, okay? These, these are uh, two possibilities. Uh, but it seems to me is that maybe it is a style, in, I mean, the first possibility could be um, more fit for what the angels uh, respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, testifying uh, to their own ignorance in front of us, Allah's, Allah's wisdom. So coming back to the meaning of the tasbih, tasbih could be is a number of sayings and doings. So it's an action as well as utterance that together 
uh, show the respect and glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, freeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all kind of imperfections that others might assign to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keeping Allah above all these inferiorities and shortcomings of human being or others other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you wanted to show or express this glorification, you express it through some sayings like you just uttered the word subhanallah. This is this is the spear. Or through action, like you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is again a tasbih. So tasbih could be uh, through saying or through doing, so or through doing. But taqdis could be the same thing, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bringing him above all kind of imperfections, but this is more in the intellect or in the aql or in the aqidah. You know it from the world of knowledge, you have the taqdis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You study the aqidah, you study all the shortcomings that the Jews, the Christians, the pagans, all these uh, other people assign to Allah, and you know that no, Allah is above this. Allah cannot be ignorant, Allah cannot be bakhil, stingent, Allah cannot be coward, Allah cannot be poor, Allah cannot be, okay? so and Allah must be Hayy al-Qayyum. So all this course of Tawheed and Aqeedah in terms of the knowledge is the taqdis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we start to say it and proclaim it and, and do the actions uh, and, and preach these things you are doing, tasbih. So you have the taqdis and you have the tasbih. To complete the all three, three parts, parts of knowledge, taqdis, Parts of saying, tasbih, parts of doing, tasbih. And the angels have fulfilled all these parts. And bihamdik is, is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we do the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we praise Him. So subhanallah and alhamdulillah, they are very much attached. And after salawat, we say, start with subhanallah, 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 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 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 33 times. And we remember all those gods and systems and deities that others assign or others attach to. And we say, Allah Akbar. Allah is even bigger than that. That that's shows you how how wonderfully Islam designed this, this dhikr, this remembrance after ending each salah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Okay, and then you end it with la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Full of wisdom, full of design. And it's meant to repeat so that with the repetition this becomes inbuilt, hardwired in, in us. وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون and when the angel says ونحن نسبح they are using the verb form نسبح meaning that they are they are continuous and that's why Allah described the angels لا يفترون يسبحون الليل والنهار لا يفترون 24 hours they are engaged in this tasbih. That's why in the Quran, uh, nothing is been attached with the word kathir. Kathir means so many times, more and more and more, like the word dhikr. Dhikr, which is the remembrance, is the only ibadah that Allah wants from us, kathir, 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 so many times, because the more we do that, the closer we became to the status of angels who are given that power by their nature to, to engage in the speech and taqdis all the time. 
اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة واصيلا this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us finally came the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I know what you do not know meaning that Allah is saying that yes what you said O angels it could be true but never forget that you have highlighted some of the negative possibilities but you have forgotten the the positive side of human being that they have this knowledge they have this uh, this spirit that i have blowed into adam alayhi salam this touch of divinity that i have given to adam alayhi salam in terms of the language and terms of uh, of these characters that he combats the corruption there will be corruption but he combats the corruption and he is going to maintain this earth i am i have built this house for him there are there will be troublemakers in the house but adam and his descendants going to bring them into the straight path and they will going to combat those corruptions from this group of those who want to just make trouble on earth and bring in a stability in this uh, equilibrium system and there are lots of noble purpose i am going to make adam fulfill on this earth he will engage in huge battles he will show to the mankind what is a civilization how the knowledge and this free will will one day make them discover so many wonderful things and use it for the purpose of maintaining and growing this earth and build a civilization build huge buildings build build cities and civilizations and uh, bring wonderful things on this earth inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun and what angels didn't know is that out of bad qualities or apparently bad qualities are attached with good possibilities some of the things that was apparent to angels that this is a bad quality let's say uh, angerness this angerness can be leveraged and exploited into being uh, brave because the, the angerness makes you go out to jihad and fight with the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the angerness when it is by itself it could lead to a murder which is a corruption and shed of blood but it could also this angerness lead to being brave and fight those who spread corruption on earth okay so out of these qualities and because of the free will and because of the nature of the test all these wonderful things is happening on this earth and this is what we have been witnessing this is the human history in a nutshell inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun that is the knowledge you could see the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that out of two bad qualities borns a good quality out of kafir comes a mu'min yukhrijul hayya min al mayyit wa yukhrijul mayyita min al hayy this qualities of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been bringing dead out of the life and the life out of the dead this dynamism the the following of day and the night and the contrast between two things these are amazing things very much highly intellectual things that the human being has got this touch of divinity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence they became the khalifa you see so even we can attach that human beings are khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have given the touch of light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they came to this earth and then they spread herein and we'll see subsequently perhaps the training of adam in the coming verses when he started to 
commit something sinful action and then he returned back to Allah. So let us inshallah continue this uh, discussion uh, in the uh, next uh, verse uh, that shows really the knowledge uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, which the angels didn't know and some of this knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gifting it to Adam and that's that is the smooth transition to the next verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to Adam by, by a demo that why Adam is fit, well fit for the purpose of being a Khalifa on earth. I have deliberately uh, spent long time on this verse because I think this is a very human verse. It is the, our story on earth as told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it deserves uh, really uh, some uh, elaborations as all the verses of the Quran actually and this is just uh, an appetizer uh, to uh, to all of us to really make the tatabur of the Quran to analyze the Quran to ponder upon its meaning and the more we give to the Quran the more the Quran gives back to us you see the amazing uh, uh, benefits and lessons and the style in the psychology in the ways of uh, debates in the ways of dialogue all these things which I saw in just one and half line of, of a verse and that is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I hope inshallah we'll continue this story in verse number 31 assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu